I had to record this 50 times. Hello, welcome to another video. In today's video, we're going to be doing Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. I have no idea what to say about this movie. That's why I had to record this 50 freaking times. I'm just going to give my verdict right now. I think it's a 6 or 7 out of 10 uh, because it's okay. It's, it's an okay movie, but I specifically enjoyed it. But I know a lot of people didn't. I know a lot of people didn't like it, but I personally enjoyed it. But there is a lot of flaws like Ghostbusters 2. Um, but I'm just going to say this right now. Ghostbusters franchise, uh, fantastic. I love Ghostbusters, especially the original movie. And in my opinion, in Afterlife. I really liked Afterlife. Um, I know a lot of people said it was okay, but I personally enjoyed it. I thought the visuals in it were great. The effects were great in that movie. And just a lot of stuff were great. And I love the music. Also, the soundtrack in this movie uh, for Frozen Empire. I thought it was also pretty good. It sounded like Ghostbusters, and I'm happy for that. I don't know who did it, Dario or something, but I did like, really like the soundtrack a lot in this movie. It did sound great. Same with Afterlife and obviously the original movie, and I think Ghostbusters 2 had a good uh, freaking soundtrack. I don't remember a 2 out of 16 soundtrack, and I don't really care because it probably sounds nothing like Ghostbusters, but I just, I just remember that Bill Murray like flies out a window or something in that movie. <laughs> So there's one thing I did like about this movie, and that's what made me excited for it. Uh, first of all, the first trailer, I wasn't really excited for it, but then once I heard more about it, like, it's supposed to be the, like, if you guys know what the original Ghostbusters is, it was, like, a TV show that was, a, it was, like, a cartoon, uh, but, like, there was a bunch of these weird, bizarre villains, like, you know, like, the ice monster and stuff like that, that we get in this movie, and that's what they try to do with that, and I was really a fan of that. But the way they executed this villain in this movie was kind of underwhelming. Like, this villain actually had a really cool, good build-up. Like, the build-up for this villain was great. And when he first shows up, it is actually pretty creepy. Like, you hear his breath and you hear him talking. Like, I thought that was great. But then once we get to the fight, it was like, that's it. <laughs> like, his fight was like three minutes. It was nothing. And I just wished there was more of it. The overall character design I think is fine. It's a little weird and again that's what it's supposed to be but I wasn't really a fan of the design personally but I did think it would have been cool if it was actually just executed properly. Now for the other ghost designs there is some cool ones like the possessor is like this red thing that like possesses stuff and I thought that was actually pretty cool like if they had more in the movie. He was in it a good amount I think but just a little bit more with him I think would have been kind of cool and but there was a lot for him so that's good there was another cool ghost that like we don't really see at all besides in one scene he had like a weird mouth or something kind of looked like Slenderman or something I don't know kind of like the sinister monster where like it's like a stitch mouth and I thought that was kind of a cool like cool like kind of creepy ghost to be honest but we don't really see him he like kind of peeks out and then it kind of goes back in because the things go back on whatever then there was another ghost that was pretty cool, I think it was called the Sewer Dragon, uh, it was like this weird, like, it kind of looks like a piranha fish, I think is what it's called, is it piranha? No, it's a angler fish, whatever, that, it had like weird teeth and stuff, and it looked kind of, like, sad, but it was kind of a cool ghost, because it does remind me of, like, the original Ghostbusters where it's, like, very weird, and then we got some of the OG ghosts, like the librarian ghosts, I think it was in the trailer for a second, you only see her for, like, a second, and it looked like they used, like, the original footage with the the going shh look like the original footage but i think they used practical effects i think they said for most of these i don't know if it was cgi it did kind of look practical and that would be cool if it was practical um because because practical effects uh was mostly used in you know 80s movies and it was an 80s movie and it looks great i think the librarian ghost was cool slimer though i think looks fantastic um they mixed him with practical and cgi i don't know if the like himself was only CGI because it does look like his face was CGI I don't know if that if like it was originally practical and they just use CGI to like make the animation and stuff like that and that would be cool I would love to see what the actual puppet looked like then because it does look like the original Slimer it looks pretty good unlike the 2016 one where he had like those luscious lips for some freaking reason but he looks great in this, and you do see him a lot, actually, in this uh, in this movie. You see him quite a bit, I, and I'm really happy for that. And, of course, you have those mini Stay Puffs that we saw in the last movie. Uh, you see him a lot in this movie, actually, like, a lot more than Afterlife. I think it's just that trend with, like, the little cute stuff. Everybody has, like, well, you know, like, Baby Yoda and stuff, and that's fine, in my opinion, but... 
but in my opinion, all of this originated from Gremlins with Gizmo, okay? I, that's, that's all I gotta say. But it's always nice to have references to Stay Puft, because he was my favorite character in Ghostbusters. I loved Stay Puft. And of course, you do get the original cast with Ghostbusters. Um, there's... You see them a little bit. You mostly see Ray, to be honest. I think you see Ray more than anybody here. Uh, like, Eddie and, um... I'm thinking of Eddie Murphy, sorry. What is... I forgot his name already, God damn it. Ernie, I think, what what it was. Was it Ernie? I don't freaking know, man. Uh, whatever, the... That guy, um... <laughs> he appears a little bit, too. I think both Ray and him appear the most. Um, you do get a bit of the phone lady. I forgot all their names. I am so sorry. You do get her a little bit. I don't think I saw Egon once in this movie, but that's to be expected because we obviously saw him fade away in the last movie, and that was like the most emotional thing I've ever felt in a while. I loved it, and I love Egon, and it was I was really sad to see that. Uh, then uh, with Bill Murray, you basically don't see him at all. You only see him for like 30 seconds. Uh, he was barely in this movie, and that's of course fine. But I was honestly expecting him to have a bigger role in this, and I was honestly kind of expecting him to die, to be honest. I was, I'm not going to lie, I thought he was going to die because I remember Bill Murray saying that he wanted to die in, I think in Ghostbusters 2 or some movie, I don't know. But once again, uh, like in the last movie, they had like no part in this movie, and they do have a little bit more in this, but Bill Murray had like no part in this movie at all compared to the last one. Another thing I was expecting is that nerd guy, I forgot his name, do you remember the guy that goes, I'm Nakima, sure, I'm, a, I'm shocked that he's not in this movie, to be honest, I thought he was gonna be in this movie, but apparently not, and I really wish he was, to be honest, that would be such a cool cameo. We also get, I think his name was William Peck, whatever his name was, the guy that tried to destroy the Ghostbusters in the original movie, he's back in this, and he has a little part, and I'm happy to see that he's in this movie it's funny to see that he's in this movie and we obviously get bill murray talking to him at the end and i do really like that <laughs> and then you get the new cast um from the last movie and i do like them i thought they were good actors i thought they were pretty good in this movie again paul rudd with all the corny jokes of course <laughs> but i thought they were funny i thought they were all good paul rudd is always pretty funny to me we do get a lot of uh Phoebe, I think his name was. Uh, we do get a lot of her in this movie, and she, like, has a relationship with someone I never expected. I think it's the girl from, uh, from, she's the little girl from Dr. Sleep, I believe, right? The freaking, the freaking young-looking girl. But yeah, she's in this movie, and she tries to make a relationship with her, but ends up that she's not a good person, and she works with the main villain. And... It's fine, but it just kind of goes for too long. Like, there is, like... Like, it's too slow, is basically what I'm saying. Like, it's fine that it's... That there is a relationship, but it kind of goes too far, and just kind of goes too long, and it kind of gets, like... Okay, get the frick out of here. <laughs> I just feel like there was such a slow build-up, and that's fine if it was, like, something really good. And the build-up was good, again, just tried down a little too long, and... We just didn't get enough of the villain, I feel like. The villain just had such a big build-up, and he was just so underwhelming. And that's what basically destroyed this movie for me. We barely get a lot of, like, the other actors besides Paul Rudd and Phoebe. I think those are the only two I remember seeing a lot. We did get, we did get a little bit of film Warfard, but still kind of barely. Like, he's barely in it. He just has a few parts, and he... He's good in it. He's good in it. There is also so many characters in this movie. There are, like, so many characters, and it's just kind of hard to, like, you know, get used to all of them because they try to get them all to have a part, but it just kind of kind of gets too complex for, like, the human, average human brain. Like, it's too much for us to handle, basically. For me, specifically, it wasn't because I focus so hard on movies, but if you're, like, not... Like, you're like a person that doesn't focus hard on movies at all. You're gonna miss a lot of stuff uh, from these people. <laughs> Another thing I I think I remembered, there was not a single, like, night uh, ghost capture. Like, I think all the ghost captures, there was only, like, three. Uh, they were all, like, during the daytime, and that could work, but it 
I wish there was like a one night type thing because like a 3C film said you kind of need to balance the horror with this because even though uh, Ghostbusters was mostly comedy there was still some horror elements to it elements to it and that's what made it so great and it's I don't remember a single night scene besides when Phoebe was talking to this the the lady that's the only thing I remember besides all that I like besides all those cons there is the pros kind of overlap everything but it's still not a per like it's not a great movie but it's enough to like be like if you're a Ghostbusters fan you'll like this movie you'll probably love it and that's how I felt about it like I'm a Ghostbusters fan so personally I liked it but I do I can see why people that you know don't know much about Ghostbusters and stuff won't like this movie again besides all that I'm giving it like a 7 out of 10 I think I think a 7 out of 10 is perfect for this movie in my opinion as a Ghostbusters fan I do think 44% on Rotten Tomatoes is way too low for this movie I think this movie should be a little higher than that but I will say it's not a great movie so yeah that's basically my review for this movie so yeah see you guys later